Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I want to thank you for joining me. You have come to Fusion DIY, where I actually take items that were destined for a landfill and I repaint them, I restore them, and I put them in my booth in Sellersville, Pennsylvania for resale. Over the last two weeks, I have had a tremendous response to my last flip video. So this week I'm going to be doing flipping five projects and I'm also at the very end I'm going to be showing you a thrift haul from yesterday. I actually went on a town-wide yard sale in one of our local towns and found some amazing amazing things very inexpensive. So I'm excited for you to see that and I hope that you enjoy this video. So I picked up this aluminum coffee pot at a recent flea market and I paid a dollar for it. I put a piece of foam in the coffee pot and I'm going to put a flower arrangement in it. Now I've had people tell me that they're just not good at arranging flowers, but for something like this, it's really just a matter of balance what you do on one side you do on the other so i'm starting with this particular flower and i'm actually going to put this right in the center of the piece of um, foam and that's my center and then i'm going to work off of the center so what i do on one side i'll do on the other and make sure that it's balanced now of course there are those situations where you may want something to be asymmetrical like on wreaths, but in this type of a situation, since I'm just doing it as a bouquet of flowers, I am going to make it balanced. And so that's really the name of the game here. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the stems and I've pulled off all of the leaves on all of these stems because the leaves were set very low on the stem. And because the stems are too long, I'm actually cutting the stems and I'm going to re-glue the leaves back on and I'm going to determine the height of the leaf and where I actually want it to be in my project. So, and there you can see there's times that I'll take it out and I'll cut something a little bit lower because it's still too tall. But as I go through, what I'm doing is I'm varying the height of the leaves, I'm varying the height of the floral the flowers and i'm simply going to be filling in that opening some of them i'll make very short and they'll be very close to the rim of the pot and others will not be and you'll see in just a few minutes you'll see i'll actually move the the camera up a little bit so that you can see the whole thing. I'm still getting used to videoing at my workshop and so this is just um, it's it's a learning curve I'll say that. So when you cut the stems off of your floral I never throw them away unless they're really itty bitty and I can't use them but the longer ones I definitely keep because there may be an occasion where I'm going to need a very short piece of stem on a flower or a project that I'm working on and I keep them and they're readily available to me if I need them. So again, you can see here where I'm filling in all of the openings and some of them I'm pushing down closer to the lip so that you cannot see inside the coffee pot. Now at this point, what I probably could have done is I probably could have filled it with some um, Spanish moss, but I didn't want to have just one or two flowers left over. I wanted to use them all. So I went ahead and I, I used them. I filled in as best as I could. And then I'll just move the leaves around so that they look a little bit more realistic. And there's an example of what I was talking about. You just glue the flower, the leaf onto the stem and just insert it where you need it. 
So now I'm pulling the leaves around, trying to make it look a little more natural. And I thought this was pretty, but I wasn't done yet. So one more goes in just to cover that one spot by the lid. And then as I looked at it, I liked it, but I felt like it needed just a little more zhuzhing. So what I did was I went and I got some baby's breath out of my stash and I started to glue in some baby's breath. Now the nice thing about this baby's breath is that you can separate it so that it doesn't look like clumps. And that's what I did here. I'm separating. At one point, one of them came off, so I fixed it. But I'm inserting the baby's breath in there, and I'm just kind of moving them around so that I don't have to worry about anything clumping. So I feel like the baby's breath just gave it a little bit extra bling that it needed. And it also helps to differentiate some of the flowers in there. So again, I'll put it into my booth and I'll probably still be playing around with the leaves when it's all said and done but I thought it turned out cute and I brought it over to my booth today so hopefully it will sell. So here's a picture of it staged. Project number two is a memo board that I found at my local Habitat Restore. I believe I paid a dollar for it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean it with some crud cutter. Just try to get some of the, the dirt off of it on the front and on the back. And then I'm going to just refresh it. It really wasn't in bad condition, but it definitely needed a paint job and those holes at the bottom, I don't know what was there, but I figured I'm just gonna fill them in and if I want to go back later and fill them with cup holders, I can do that. So I filled in the holes with joint compound. And once that dried, I actually came back and gave it a sanding. I didn't want the and always to show through. So I scraped that, sanded that down and I cleaned it then with some crud cutter. And I'm taking off the little memo clip so that I can also sand down that little part right there. And then I'm ready to go ahead and start painting. So I used the Rust-Oleum chalked linen white and I'm really just giving it a refresh. There's not a whole lot that I needed to do to this. Um, just give it a refresh and then I'm actually going to be applying a transfer onto it once I have let the paint dry. Now unfortunately I didn't get a video clip of me picking out the transfer but I'll show you here what it is. It's actually from the Prima Redesign Classic Vintage Labels transfer and you get quite a number of labels on here and I've used a lot of them. I still have a bunch left but they've come in very very handy for smaller projects so it was definitely worth the um, the money that I spent. So I'm going to start by using my transfer tool and I have to be honest with you this took me quite a while to get this transfer down 
And when I was done, my shoulder and my hand were pretty sore. That's probably because I didn't put any kind of a coating over the paint. And so lesson learned, I won't do that again, but it definitely took a lot of effort to get it done. And you can see I've been struggling. I was struggling with some of it coming up. Now I'm going to take it, the plastic that was, uh, the transfer came on, and I'm burnishing the edges to make sure that all of those edges are lying flat and there's no chance of anything coming up. And then I'm going to take some Waverly clear chalk paint and I'm going to seal that transfer onto the wood so that there's no chance that in the future that it will it will raise oh and I'm also putting the the hook back on as well And now I'm just going to go with the rag and I'm going to wipe off the excess. And then I will reattach the clip at the top. And we are going to call this project done. I found this frame at the Habitat Restore and it has the hanging hardware on the back. It's a good sturdy frame, so I thought that I would put some transfers on a piece of foam board and put it back into the frame. So this is the lavender transfer from IOD, and this is really just the creative artist coming out. The nice thing about IOD transfers is that they are so detailed and they're so pretty and they are very easy to use. So you saw all I did was peel the back off and I laid it onto my project piece and now I'm taking the transfer tool that comes with your transfers and I'm pressing, rubbing the transfer down onto the foam board. And then I'll go back over it and I'm burnishing the edges to make sure that they do not come up. For the most part, once you lay down your transfer, you've peeled it off the back, the backing off, and you've laid it down, you're pretty much committed because if you try to pull it up, you're actually going to rip the transfer. So just be aware of that but look at how easy it is. This was a very, very fast project. Didn't take me long at all. And I'm burnishing the transfer to make sure all the edges are down. You can also transfer, lay a transfer over another transfer. And so that gives you more versatility with your transfers. And this is a good example of that. So I had a smaller piece and all those little cuts, those little extra pieces, you need to save those because you never know when you might need it for a project. Now you can see that one doesn't look done, so I'm going to take another 
piece of a transfer and I'm going to simply add it to the top so that it looks like a full stem. Now I'm going to put the foam board back into the frame, press it in, and put the backing on. And one of the hooks that holds the backing in place was a little bit loose, so I got out my screwdriver and I simply tightened it up a little bit to make sure that it was holding in place. And that was as simple as it gets. This next project was, uh, I started with a little box that I picked up at a flea market and it was wood and it was painted in navy blue. So I wasn't gonna change the color, but I did grab a couple of transfers that I had left over from another project and I started to adhere the projects, the transfers to the project. Um, I really didn't have a whole lot to do here and I knew when I saw the little box exactly what I was going to do. You guys may remember that in an earlier thrift haul I got some small little clear glass bottles in graduated sizes so my thought was that I was going to put those in this little box. So I'm putting on the second transfer and these went on very easily of course with a transfer anytime you have a flat surface they're bound to go on pretty easily. And you can see that as you start to put the transfer on, it starts to become opaque. It actually changes color, which means that the, the uh, transfer is adhering to your flat surface. So I got these two on, and then after I got the two of them on, I felt like it just needed something else. So I added a third one, but unfortunately I did not capture that on video when I was uh, was putting it on. I just, sometimes I just don't think and I don't turn the camera on. But, so this is the second one that I put on and you can see that once I put the transfer on, I'll go back and burnish it to make sure that all of the edges are down and everything is adhered to the little box. So here it is with the third transfer on it and I thought it turned out really cute. And here it is staged in my booth with the four bottles in it. It's hard to see, but there are four bottles there in graduated sizes. For my final project today, I picked up this stool at my local thrift store for $2.92. And I'm just taking some crud cutter to try to get the grease pencil off the wood, but it would not come off, so I had to go with sandpaper. So I sanded it down, all four sides, and then I started to take off the, uh, the cover, uh, the seat, and this you could tell it had been on here for quite a while because the screws were actually flathead screws and um, I finally got it off and then I had to take the tacks out of the wood uh, so I could get the fabric off but to my delight when I did get the fabric off the underneath was brand new it was in great condition no stains, no smells, nothing. So this is a fabric that I've had for quite a long time and always looking for the perfect opportunity to use it. And for some reason, this just really stuck out to me that uh, this was the fabric that I was going to use this time around. So what I'll do is I'll try to figure out how much I need and then I'm going to cut my fabric to fit the the chair or the, the seat. So one of the things that I really like to do when I am recovering a cushion like this um, is I like to turn my sides in um, and you'll see that coming up in the video. I don't like to have the raw edge. It's just there's something about it that uh, doesn't appeal to me. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the bench 
and I'm using an acrylic paint. This is an apple barrel paint, paint, hunter green. And the brush I'm using is a zebra brush. And this brush made painting this bench such a delight. It was extremely easy to use. It really handled the paint like a champ and it just made painting the bench so, so easy. So I highly recommend, and I think I got that zebra brush at either Home, De Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't remember where I got it, but yeah, it really made a big, big difference. So I'm gonna paint all four sides. And this actually took two, about two and a half coats to cover the wood. Um, and um, I really love the green. I tried to match the green in the, the fabric and it came pretty close. Normally I would use a chalk paint, but I couldn't find a chalk paint that was that close in color. So I went with the acrylic paint. And after I painted this and the paint dried, I gave it a couple of coats of the clear wax by Waverly and that sealed in that paint. But in the meantime, I'm just going through and making sure that I'm getting every part of the bench painted. And now I'm actually covering the seat and you can see where I'm folding in the, the raw edge of the material. It's just a, just a thing with me that it's got to look as pretty underneath as it does on top. And so it took a couple of tries just to make sure that the fabric was tight enough so that it wouldn't bunch or buckle. And that was a, a staple that went in the wrong way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm doing my corners. And the funny thing is with corners, you can't, there's really no exact science to it. You just really kind of have to play with it until you you are satisfied with it. One of the things that I did was I cut off some of the additional fabric so that it wasn't so bunchy when I went to staple it down. And you can see, you know, you just have to play with it until you're satisfied with it. And so here is the finished product. And I put this in my booth and I'm hoping that it will sell. So this is part of my thrift haul from yesterday, which was Saturday. Um, I've got this mirror. Can you believe that this mirror was $3? I can't wait to paint this thing. It's just beautiful and it's heavy but it is beautiful i also picked up this coat hook set uh, and i picked it up more for the hooks than i did for the wood those are solid brass and they are heavy so and i paid a dollar for that i got a grapevine wreath for a dollar and those are always good to have. And then I picked up this piano bench for $3. Now, I'm hoping to be able to take the vinyl off of the cover, off the, the seat, to see what kind of wood is underneath. Um, I will probably, once I take the, 
the vinyl off, I'll be able to see if there's wood under there, and if not, I'll just recover it. And then I picked up this table, this chunky leg table. I plan on painting it, and I plan on putting a stencil on the top of it. I just love this table. The table was $4. I also picked up this mirror and I plan on doing some molds on this mirror. It looks like it came from a dresser. It is very heavy, but that was $2. And then look at this blanket chest it, or either it's either a toy chest or a blanket chest. I don't really know, but my thought was to put some feet on the blanket chest and raise it up so that it could be used as a coffee table, a blanket chest, a toy chest, whatever. Uh, it does have some dings to it, but it is in fantastic condition. Doesn't smell, there's no odor to it. And then look at this ball jar. The blanket chest was $5 and this ball, bell jar, excuse me, bell jar was $5. Can you believe it? I put my hand there so that you could see just how big it is. It's very large and the pan underneath uh, is metal, uh, and that's an iron butterfly. Just beautiful, $5, I couldn't believe it. So what did you think? My personal favorite item was definitely the little bench that I made over, I painted green with that beautiful Waverly fabric. And what about those finds? Weren't they amazing? That bell jar is absolutely beautiful. I think I might wait until the fall to put that in my booth, um, but and I'm definitely gonna make over the, the bench, um, the um, toy box. I don't know if it's toy box or blanket box or what it is, but I think I'm gonna put some feet on it and I'm going to paint it and I think I'm gonna stencil it or I'm going to put some transfers on it, not sure yet. And that mirror, how about that mirror? That mirror is beautiful. One thing that I found that I am not going to be selling, I'm gonna keep it for myself, is this item right here. And it is quite large, but it is a solid oak basket. Now it definitely has some problems. Down on the bottom, there's some broken um, slats, but I'm not overly concerned about that because I'm going to be using this for my own personal use. Look at the size of this thing. This is huge. I'm gonna put it in my living room and I'm gonna put some quilts in it uh, and blankets, you know, just comforters, things to keep people warm during the chilly winters. But isn't that amazing? This was $5 and it, like I said, it's solid oak. So I am very excited about the things that I found yesterday. So I hope that you'll come back and join me again in the future where you will see me actually make over these items. Once again, thank you for, for joining us today. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified every time that I produce another video. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for joining me. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you soon.